Hello everyone and welcome to the special presentation for stormwind.com. My name is Doug Bassett and what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about sort of a less understood flavor of DNS known as a stub zone. What stub zones do is they provide us with a subset of our normal DNS records. And as you know, the whole purpose behind DNS is to match a name to an IP address. But let's say that I'm in an area that has kind of constrained bandwidth. You know, we don't have the ability to handle all these zone transfers all the time. And I don't want to use conditional forwarding because with conditional forwarding, what happens is, is any time that you lose a DNS server or you add a DNS server, I have to get a phone call that says, oh yeah, go ahead and add it to the list. So we're going to use what are called stub zones. Now, the important thing to understand about stub zones is they are read only. That means that I'm going to pull it down from a primary server or an Active Directory integrated server or another secondary server, but I'm not allowed to actually modify it. And it's a subset of all of our records. You'll notice we have NS, A records, and SOA records. Now, what exactly are these things? Well, the whole point here is to find servers that I can query to find information about that namespace, like stormwind.com. I would go up and I would say, hey, pull down the SOA record, which is a start of authority record, that lists all the information that we need to know about things like time to live, who the administrator is, how often we have to do updates. Then what I want to do is I want to pull in a list of all the NS servers, the name servers. These are the DNS servers who are authoritative for that zone. They're the ones that's going to be able to find www.stormwind.com and, and so on and so on. But that is just the name servers. I need the IP addresses. That's where we have what are called glue records or A records. They call them glues because it's just gluing the NS record to the actual IP address. So let's go ahead and show you how we can set up this replication. I'm going to go into my server and we're going to create a brand new zone. So we'll say new zone. And this is going to be a stub zone. We're going to store it as part of Active Directory. Actually, I'm not going to do that. We'll talk about Active Directory integrated later. You can come into our applications class or network infrastructure class. So inside a stub zone, we're going to say that this is zyx.com. And I'll say next and we'll create a brand new file because we're not going to store it as part of Active Directory. And I have to put in the IP address of this particular machine. Now realize that I have a couple of options. I can pull this from a primary server, a secondary server, or one that is Active Directory integrated. So I'm going to go in, I'll put in the IP address. Let me get out of the way here. I'll say 172.16.1.0. Dot 180, and it'll verify, yep, it's validated, but this is what happens, and you, we see this a lot. When I go through there and I pull the record down, zoom, here comes the information. And notice that we just have the SOA, the NS, and the A records. Now, of course, when you do that, the other zone has to be configured to allow zone transfers, and by default, uh, Microsoft DNS zones are not designed to permit zone transfers. You actually have to have a specific permission to be able to do that. So what we've done is we've shown you the stub zones. The whole purpose behind these stub zones is to make it so that it's very easy for me to grab just the, so the sort of records that I need. So as you add DNS servers or as you remove DNS servers, you don't have to give me a call. I will automatically know about it. So we'd like to thank you for your time, and hopefully we've been able to clear up a little bit of the mysteries behind these SOA records and how we transfer the NS records and A records as part of a stub zone transfer.